Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna talk about the Lenovo Think Center M900 Tiny, which is this thing. Now this is a small, about one liter PC. And specifically, this is actually an older model. So this was came out, I think in about 2015 or so, making it kind of right at the breakpoint between where we saw DDR3 and DDR4 generation products, this is DDR4. And that gives it a lot of modern features, but it also means that it's at a very reduced price. So as part of our Project Tiny Mini Micro series, one of the things that we really want to look at is what are the low cost nodes that we can repurpose that used to be, say, corporate desktop PCs into either, you know, good little home web browsing nodes or also things like home servers. Turns out that because this has a lot of modern features, it actually works pretty well as a low power, low cost server. In fact, this system right here, we got with a Core i5-6500T. It has eight gigabytes of memory. We also got a Windows 10 Pro license with it, and the total cost was only $160. Now, there are some caveats to how we got that and what you can find, but we're gonna talk about that in this video. First, let's just talk about what's on the system. So let's take a look at this real quick and what you can notice here is that on the front we actually have two usb three ports we also have a headphone and a microphone jack two usb ports plus the two audio ports is actually pretty common in this class of device we sometimes in later generations see usb c and there are a few models out there that actually have three usb four ports in the front but those are very few and far between when we look at the back of the unit we actually get two display ports but we get a third display output, which is actually a VGA output in this generation. Now, all the major systems from vendors like Dell, Lenovo, and HP have this third slot that can be optional. So there could be either no display output, it could also be a serial output, or you can find a VGA, HDMI, or display port. This one happens to have VGA. It's something to look at whenever you look at these systems. Another big feature that you're gonna see on the rear of the system is you're gonna see four USB ports. And that's really good because these are actually USB three ports. They're not USB two. Some systems that we've already looked at as part of Project Tiny Mini Micro use USB two ports on the back. and so this this has USB three type A ports all around. It's not one of the newer generation systems that has 10 gigabit per second USB 3.2 gen two ports, but it still has the at least USB three instead of USB two, which was much slower. There's also another audio jack in the back. Now the other story on the back of the system is actually networking. We have a one gigabit network port, but then we also have our Wi-Fi antenna header. Getting inside the system is super easy. In fact, all you really have to do is you just kind of undo one screw, you pop open the top like this and boom, you're inside. Now, when we first got the unit, we noticed something uh, that was a little bit disconcerting specifically, and hopefully you can hear this on the mic. And hopefully what you just heard, it was a little clanking sound. It probably looked really weird on camera, but that's what it is. And what that clanking sound actually is, was actually one of the coolest things. So the seller of this unit actually took the tiny little screws that you use to put a two and a half inch hard drive into this tray area right here. And the seller actually took those, taped them together and put them there, but it was clunking around. So when we first got the system, we thought something was broken until we opened up and looked inside. Key tip here, always open up any tiny mini micro node that you purchase, especially if it's secondhand, because sometimes things are loose and just kind of flying around on the inside. These actually are taped down, but they made a little clunking sound. So it's something that we had to go investigate. On the top of this unit, you're gonna see the fan. And the reason that that fan is there is really to cool the processor. Now this particular unit came with a Core i5-6500T processor. And that is an important distinction. There are also things like Core i3 and lower variants, but there was also a Core i5-6400T. And there's a small difference to the 6500T versus the 6400T that is very important if you're gonna use this as a Project Tiny Mini Micronode. At first, you may think it's just a 300 megahertz upgrade. So maybe you should just go get the 6400T. But the difference with the 6500 is that the 6500 actually supports vPro technology. There's also a Core i5-6600 and then a Core i7-6700T. Both of those options also support vPro. So if you do want that type of remote manageability, remote power on, power off, have the ability to use RealVNC and actually get a remote KVM type of solution, well then you do want a 6500T or higher CPU. By removing a single thumb screw, we can actually get into and get under this two and a half inch hard drive tray. Now, just real quick on this hard drive tray, you can see we already talked about the little rubber grommets and the screws, and that's important. You wanna make sure that if you are going to install a drive here that you have those, because otherwise it's a little bit hard to get them into this design. Newer designs that we're seeing on current generation systems tend to be more toolless, and they don't have these screws, but in this older generation, that was still a consideration. These screws also have a little rubber grommets, so if you are using a 
the hard drive, they do act as vibration dampeners. If you have a solid state drive, it's probably not as big of a deal. One nice feature that we really liked on the two and a half inch hard drive thing is that this version of the system actually used a nice hard connector. So it doesn't use a cabled connector, which some of the newer systems do use. Dell tends to use this kind of hard connector on all of their systems. And so we actually like the fact that Lenovo is using it here. Underneath the hard drive, what you're going to find is you're going to find two SODIM slots. Now this took DDR4-2133 SODIMs. So that is generally pretty inexpensive. This had a single 8 gig DIM. You could also get two 4 gig DIMs. But the nice thing about having the single 8 gig DIM is that for about $20 to $25, you can usually get a secondhand or sometimes even new SODIM that's 8 gigs and have 16 gigs of memory in this little system. And that's very inexpensive. Next to that, we have a M.2-2280, so up to 80 millimeter drive slot, so you can put an NVMe SSD in this. Ours didn't come with one, but you could. The other thing that you have is that you, on the bottom here, have a Wi-Fi NIC. Now there is something to this that's gonna be hard to see on this system from this far away, but something that is a little bit nuanced is that when they design this system, part of the Wi-Fi antenna and one of the Wi-Fi antenna leads actually goes to this. So on the two and a half inch hard drive tray or attached to it, we actually have this part of the antenna. And so there's a little antenna lead that you can see that we're using right now to hold up this drive that goes to the Wi-Fi M.2 slot. And you might say, well, why does that matter? Why is this a big deal? Well, it turns out that when you pull out your two and a half inch hard drive, say you have to do a RAM upgrade, maybe you can do an SSD upgrade or whatever it is, you tend to pull the little connector out of the Wi-Fi card because it's so small and it's attached to this. So be very careful if you do that, because if you do pull it out, you're going to want to reattach it when you reassemble it. And I'm only saying that because we've done a lot of these systems so far and we haven't seen it a lot on other systems. And also we have managed to pull this off of the Wi-Fi card just about every time we've opened the system up. The other thing we want to talk about is just how we got this node, because this was only about $160. And we actually have the full configuration here with somebody's name, Joe, I guess, which is just kind of there. It's not my name, but you know, it's there. And we got this thing for about $160, but it didn't come with an SSD. But still, it was one that we looked at and we thought that this actually provided a really awesome value. And there are two reasons for that. And that's going to bring us to our key takeaways for our Project Tiny Mini Micro, which we're doing in every single one of the videos in this series. And the reason we selected this particular note at $160 wasn't just because it was inexpensive, it was because we knew that it had some features that we wanted. So the first thing we saw here was actually has the vPro sticker, which means that it had vPro. And we're trying to get as many of these units with vPro. We have some that don't have it, but we are trying to get as many that we can. And when we look at the bottom of the system, what we actually have is a little tiny sticker here. And this sticker says Pro Windows or Windows Pro on it. So even though this system was listed as it has no OS, in fact, even on that top cover, we actually have a little line that says no OS on it. We knew that this had the embedded Windows Pro license key because that's the OEM sticker, which means that there's a license embedded in here. So our key takeaway is to look at the pictures in the listing because sometimes there are features that these systems have that if you've watched these videos and you know more about these systems, you're actually gonna be able to pick up on and find which ones are just slightly better values. The final bit we wanna talk about on the hardware side is really the power adapter. Now, the power adapter on this system, um, well, it came here and it has a whole bunch of what could best be described as lint and cobwebs that are in the Velcro that go around the 65 watt power adapter. The nice thing is that these power adapters are shared with Lenovo's notebook line. So there are an absolute ton of them out there. It's a rel relatively small power supply at 65 watts. So it's very easy to get a replacement, but it does show that this thing has had a pretty long life. And if you see something like this, you may say, mm, maybe I'll give it a shot. Or maybe you might say, okay, well, maybe you're gonna have to budget a couple dollars in the future to go get a new one. This particular unit worked fine, so you just need to clean it a little bit, but something that we didn't see in the pictures, but we got it and we're like, oh, that's actually kind of a little gross. In terms of performance, the Core i5-6500T is already something that we've looked at before. Now, a couple really quick points here. First off, the Core i3 units, they were two cores and four threads in this generation, and they didn't have turbo boost. The Core i5-6500 did have turbo boost. It was four cores, four threads. The Core i7 in this generation was four cores, eight threads. Performance-wise, it is what we've seen from other units with this processor, but we should talk about what happened after. So after the system came out, it was this, the seventh generation and really saw a pretty similar, actually, Core i5 lineup in that generation. But then when we got to the eighth generation, which would be like the 8500T in this, the Core i5-8500T was actually a six-core part. So in the interim, 
AMD came into the market, started competing, started offering some very competitive systems, which we have reviews of some of them already on this Project Tiny Mini Micro playlist and on the main site. But because AMD started becoming more competitive just after the system came out, what you actually see is that Intel started bumping up core counts. And nowadays you can actually get Core i5s with hyper-threading, which you just never used to be able to get. The other thing that we wanted to point out was that this has the Intel HD 530 graphics in there. So if you want to go look up things like Plex transcoding, you can go look it up and see how that compares. Now in about 2017 or so, we got the 630 series, which lasted for a few generations and has a couple more features for that transcoding, especially with QuickSync. And so something to definitely look at and go do your research on. Now, Nick actually has a guide on the STH main site in terms of how to set one of these Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes up as a Plex media server. So I'd say go check that out. The other one to go check out is that we have a guide in terms of how to turn one of these into a PFSense router. So you can do that as well. We have a couple other guides that are gonna be coming, but just something to kind of keep an eye on. Overall at $160, I think this is a great value. In fact, it's actually only a little bit more than a Raspberry Pi eight gigabyte unit. And especially once we go and we add that second eight gig dim. So now we're at 16 gigs memory. We add a nice SSD in there, either SATA or NVMe. You tend to get a lot more performance in a single node. It uses more power than a Raspberry Pi, but cost wise, it doesn't cost more than like say two fully kitted out Raspberry Pi eight gigabyte models. And so actually I think that this is a nice case where you can consolidate, you get a really well-engineered platform. And I really like this for that use case. And they're very inexpensive. I mean, this thing is under $200. In fact, we probably could have found a really inexpensive SSD, put it in here and had an entire system with eight gigabytes of memory and SSD had Windows 10 Pro on it. And it still would have been under $200, which I think is a great value. As a pro tip, if you do have a child that's in school that needs a system, maybe you wanna have them hook it up to a TV or something like that. And you don't necessarily wanna go get another laptop or a Chromebook or something like that. You need a Windows PC. This is actually a really inexpensive option to go fill that need and without having to go spend lots of money. And plus you can repurpose it as a virtualization node. We've put Proxmox on these things. You can put Ubuntu on these things. There are various different options that you have because this is a very flexible x86 box. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, then why don't you click on subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with new videos. We have a whole Project Tiny Mini Micro playlist. We have lots of reviews and stuff coming up both on our YouTube channel, but we also have the STH main site, which has a lot more content. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.